from Barack Obama shut down. Keep black men's name out your mother mouth. To black men voting for Donald Trump. I'm voting for Donald Trump for president. Did Kamala Harris lock up black people? Only thing she did was lock up black people and laugh about that shit. Christians in America should hear this. I know the Democratic Party is a demonic platform. We're coming for you. Hello, how are you? Welcome back to Show New Trend. I'm your host of today, and my name is Elvis Derry. Do you guys remember this video? Keep my wife's name out your f mouth! The same thing is currently happening to Barack Obama, aka Barry Sotoro, where people are telling him to keep black men's name out of your f***ing mouth. Listen to this. This message is for Barack, ain't never did a f thing for n in the eight years he was in the White House, ever Obama. Keep black men's name out your mother mouth. We not about to do that. That's what we not about to do. And I'm a black woman that's not playing with your mother It's Mr. Biracial. Okay? You ain't did a thing for us in the eight years that you was in the White House. And you think you gonna pop up during an election year? And try to scold black men for not wanting to vote for your candidate? Have you lost your f***ing mind? I need you to go back into whatever cave and hole you f***ing came out of and stay there. You're not about to come out and try to disrespect black men. We're not about to f***ing do that. And this is a black ass woman telling you that. It's not happening. I'm not going for it. If you thought that I was going to hop on a bandwagon and be like, yeah, tell them f no. Be quiet. There are millions of people in this country that are not voting for Kamala. And it's her mother fault. Every time she opens her mouth, bullshit flies out. Many people will claim that politics is a dirty game. But it only becomes dirty when you, the voter, votes for a corrupt individual who is just thirsty for power. Listen to what Kamala Harris did with the supplies that was meant for the hurricane victims just to take a photo op for Kamala. And they never sent the bird. Wait a minute, what? They loaded an entire C-17 full of supplies for the hurricane victims, just for K Kamala to go there, take a photo, take a video, and they never sent the C-17. It was Are just you a floor. serious? Yeah, that was a National Guard, North Carolina National Guard unit. That was a 06 that reached out to me. And then I had another- He you know, reached out to you to tell you that they did a photo op and yeah. with the with yeah. the intention of never sending never VA. sending it was just a photo op the day joe biden flew in to Asheville, they had to put up a, another temporary flight restriction over like the entire airspace there um there wasn't any exact time it just kind of said from like i think 11 to like 4 p 4 p.m or something and it wound up being i think from 11 30 to about 3 30 or something but by him coming there he actually never landed he just flew around viewing, but because of that TFR, all rescues were shut down. We couldn't go do work. And that was the very first day we had like no fog, no clouds, no rain. And we were like, oh, we're going to go get all these rescues in. And this was still early in the week. I think it was Wednesday uh, when people were still very, very desperate. So I ran to a senator from North Carolina the day before at the Asheville airport, and he was telling me about it. Uh, he was like, we're trying to stop him from coming here. And they were telling him, if you come here, they're not going to be able to do their job. It doesn't matter what religion you believe or the God that you pray to every day. But your vote counts. Your vote matters. And why does it matter? Because your vote will not only impact your life, but also impact the people that are around you. And also, it will determine where your country will be in the next years. So, if you're a Christian out there, this video is for you. Listen to it and listen to it very, very carefully. I would never call Donald Trump for pastoral advice. I wouldn't even call him for Christian advice in general. Do I believe he's a Christian man? I don't know. 
But I tell you what I do know. I know that the Democratic Party is a demonic platform. They promote transgenderism. They promote homosexuality. They promote destroying marriage as according to biblical marriage and the family. And what I've noticed is there's a lot of people that are sitting on the fence. I read today 32 million church-going Christians say, I'm not going to vote, may not vote, because I don't like either candidate. Candidate, You're not voting for a pastor. If you go to church, you've already got a pastor. These 32 million people will show up for an ice cream social. They'll show up to sit on the pew to listen to a sermon. They'll show up to vote what color carpet they're going to put in their church. But you're telling me that you can't vote for the side that exemplifies Christian values according to biblical standards. That's where you need to check yourself. That's where you need to fall on your face and repent if you're on that side of the fence. Because, my friends, the time of being on the fence and not taking a stand is over with. It's time for all brethren, all men to stand firm and be bold. Be bold in the last days. We will be judged by what we do and, and what we don't do. The Bible says to him that do, knows to do good and does it not. To that person, it's a sin. We'll give account to our God for every idle word and every thought, everything we do in this life. Make it count. Your vote matters. When Barack Obama was president for eight years in America, what impact or change did he bring to the black community? And do you think he has the right to come back right now and lecture and degrade black men into voting for Kamala Harris? Listen to this. I saw that Kamala was speaking. And you know, she got really real when she went and pulled out the civil tongue devil, Obama himself. Okay, black people stay focused. First of all, remember... Kamala was in uh, the prosecutor. Only thing she did was lock up black people and laugh about that shit. That shit wasn't funny. A lot of black men suffer like hell while this demonic motherfucker, this cackling fucking hyena, laughed her ass off like that shit was funny. Listen, y'all, now is not the time to get distracted with the Obama bullshit. She know her ass losing, so that's why she went and pulled him out. Remember how happy we was when he first got elected? But what did he do for the black community? Absolutely not one motherfucking thing. Not one motherfucking thing did his ass do. And look at Kamala and her policies. They have completely failed the black community, okay? Kamala has put up. In New York, over three hundred and twenty-five dollars, over three hundred and fifty-two dollars per night for the illegals to stay in fucking luxury hotel rooms. They have gave over one hundred and seventy-five billion dollars to the Ukraine, and also they just had forty-one buses of illegals that arrived in Chicago, which they're giving them over $9,000 per person. And what did they do for the hurricane victims? It took them many days before they even showed up for them people. This is completely absurd. You and I have never seen over the years laws that have been implemented that supports and upgrades and uplifts the lives of the black people, the black community. But yet, Barack Hussein Obama, a.k.a. Barry Setoro, comes and has the guts to lecture and degrade black, young black men into voting in Kamala Harris. Thank you for your unexpected speech, Barack Obama. Even our brother here had to say thank you. Listen to this. Barack, Barack, Barack. As a native of Chicago that watched your policies not do a single thing for black people, not anything for crime, not anything for a better way of living. It is insulting that you decided to get up here and pander us as black men for not voting for Kamala Harris. You are only voting for Kamala yourself because you have no choice. We both know that deep down inside, you wanted to open convention, but the optics didn't look good. We also both know that there were way better candidates that you guys could have went with for president, but you guys didn't. And so now they bring you out the big guns because they need you to come up here and clean up this mess because you know what? You are a well-spoken man because I can tell you right now that your nominee is not 
I can tell you that your nominee doesn't answer questions. Your nominee stutters all the time and she spits out word salads. And you expect for us to vote for her. I'm black. I'm not stupid. I vote for policies. I vote for what's going to allow for my way of living to change. I vote so that everyone can have a chance and continue to be a free thinker and not have censorship. And then you got up here on this stage and insulted every black man in America. Let us take a short break. You're going to be right back. Everybody. Is that right? I, I hope I said it well. Elvis literally just taught me that word. Amazing, brother. Amazing. <laughs> So it is twenty-five days from now we are going to win Nevada, we are going to defeat Kamala Harris, and we are going to make America great again. From the very beginning of this journey, I have been on a mission to rescue our nation from a failed and corrupt political establishment, and it is corrupt. And to give you back the country that you believe in, the country that you were born in, and the country that you deserve, and we're going to do it. In that mission, I will never quit, I will never bend, I will never break, I will never yield, not even in the face of death itself. Well, won't happen. As you know, I'm putting everything on the line to fight for you, and I am also only asking you for one thing. Vote! Get out and vote! This man is awesome. Oh my god. Let's welcome a brusky Elvis Deli. The question of the day is, do you think Barack Obama has been a plant? Do you think he has been a project over the years, even before he became president? Do you think has been a project even before the 9-11 attack that happened on American soil? Listen to this. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Barack Obama was a plant. Yes. He was. He was. And now they want to put Michelle Barack on. Obama was yes. a plant. <laughs> he did nothing for the black community. Nobody even knows who he is. Has, did he ever come back to Chicago with as no. much crime to talk to young black men? No. He doesn't give a mm. damn. No, he doesn't. Jeez. Barack Obama is a curse on this nation. Jeez. So is Joe Biden. I think it's the black yeah. abomination. We provided abomination. the money mm. for his <laughs> Marxist socialist programs, yes. pushing abortion in Africa it's and an other abomination. things. He didn't care about us. No. He didn't care. <laughs> that gave rise to Trump because Trump actually listened to us. He actually cares. Many of us, I mean, it was it's bad. At least bad. Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton BS to said, I feel your pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at least he said it. Barack Obama didn't give a damn. He should have never been elected. Before he was elected in 2000, and, what, he got elected in 2008, my mother sent, may God rest her soul, letters to black churches warning them about Barack Obama, saying he was so ungodly. I said, Mom, that's harsh. She, she wrote it anyway. Right. And everything my mother said, may God rest her soul, was right. He hates this country, but he wants to live off the fat of the land. Like the founders of Black Lives Matter, they don't give a damn about black people. They didn't have to spend one dime to help build a black business. Mm. But these lesbians, they bought homes exactly. in predominantly white neighborhoods. Yes. See, they say they she have the yeah, she, is, she, she, is, she, uh, she is going in. She is spending straight wow. I always thought that every president, when your term is over, it is time to retire and enjoy in peace. But have you noticed that in every election, Obama comes back and tells the people, especially the black community, on who to vote for. Like currently, he's going around campaigning for Kamala Harris and also lecturing young black men into voting for the Kamala Harris. Listen to what our brother had to say about this. Obama should be ashamed of himself. Why is this guy going around chastising young black men on the vote 
on who they're voting for. Who is Barack Obama to go to young men and, and pretty much shame them because they're considering voting for Trump? Why is it that Obama is so invested on who becomes the next president? Why won't this man just go off into the sunset, enjoy his va his retirement at Martha's Vineyard, and just just live out the rest of his life in peace? Like, what does it matter to Obama who becomes the next president? Like, why is he so invested? Like, I I get that. Yeah, he had his first four years. He said had his second four years. He had what some say. A shadow government behind Biden Now he wants I guess a fourth term Behind Kamala But Obama why, why is he so invested This man is literally On the campaign trail For Kamala Harris Joe Biden The sitting president Isn't even on the campaign for Kamala to me, it looks like Barack Obama is trying to act like the messiah for the black people, the messiah for the black community. But yet, he was in office, he was in power, he was the president for eight years, but yet he, he did nothing for the black community. Look at the crimes, look at the people who died because of police brutality, and yet he never spoke up, he never defended our people, and he never fought back and protected our people. But yet right now he's coming to tell us who to vote for, or oh, hell no. Listen to what our brother had to say about this. Man, they got Obama on the campaign trail for Miss Harris. I'm trying to figure out one thing. Who do the f Obama supposed to be? The f black messiah? Talking about his message to all the black men. Why we not vote for Miss Harris? Motherfucker, did you look at the situation we, we in right now? You know, in the last four years? And then, mama, you ain't done a motherfucking thing? Shit. It's, it, it was better when Trump was in office than me all the way around. So who the f do Obama supposed to be the goddamn Messiah, man? Hell, nah, man. You, 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 you ain't spread the Red Sea. You know what I mean? You, you, you ain't done no, no shit like that to us, man. You ain't did shit for us, really, on the cool. You know, so I let a uh, bringing Obama and praising Obama. I don't give a damn about Obama. When he starts doing something for these black community, then I say, well, good two those to you too, brother. But other than that, man, stop throwing that shit in our face by all oh, the black men not voting for uh Miss Harris. I'm not voting for mother Miss Harris. That's just flat out. And I don't give a damn who she bring in. Obama is not the messiah, man, for black people. Basically, the Democrats are losing it to the Republicans. And it seems like many people are going to vote for Donald Trump in this coming election just a few days ahead. And the people are angry. The black men are angry. The community is angry after the black man has been lectured by Barack Hussein Obama into voting for Kamala Harris, which is not going to happen. Just look at how our brother is angry. And even me, I'm not American, but I am angry. Listen to this. President Obama, with all due disrespect, man, go sit your duck ass down. Like we can't see what the f*** just happened in the last four years and then the four years before that. Like our pockets and our account don't read the f different numbers. Like, we can't see. We paying more for gas, groceries, and Snicker Bars 305. That's my favorite candy, so of course I know. Sit your duck ass down, man. You want us to vote for Kamala? Tell us what the fuck you did for us. I wait. Tell us what the fuck gave you such a big voice for us. Like, you did so good of a job. I wait. Y'all kill me trying to shame people into a vote. Tell me what the you fist to do you can't shame me this is not high school we don't play them semantic games around here man you mad at black men because they got a fucking brain they use logic we can actually see what the file account look like and you mad at that Thomas? some when we gotta get the black man shut your duck ass up so if you're an american and doesn't matter which state you're from or it doesn't matter how you look like or doesn't matter what the color of your skin is if you are angry enough and you want to make the right decision, this is the right time to make decision. And this is the right time to vote for the right person. And I'm going to leave you guys with this video. 
Sorry, Obama, I'm a black man and I'm voting for Donald Trump for president and there is no amount of lecturing or bullying or shaming that you can do that is going to make me change that decision. I am not afraid to vote for Kamala Harris because she is a woman. I refuse to vote for Kamala Harris because she has spent the last four years destroying this country. She has spent the last four years throwing up the, the borders um, to illegal immigrants. She has spent the last four years destroying this economy. We have seen over the past couple of months that she is not fit to be president. She can barely speak. She can't articulate a vision. And actually, she's pretty stupid. And if you think that I, as a black man, am going to let that waltz into the White House, that that is going to get my vote because you're lecturing me and you're bullying me. And you may be the surrogate black dad for a lot of fatherless black boys that are running around this country, but I got a dad, I know who he is, and it ain't you. I'm voting for Donald Trump for president. Take it or leave it. Sorry, Obama. In downtown Atlanta, where you can't even walk anymore, the shooter had been previously arrested 11 times, but they think it was 24 times. He'd gone to prison for assault and armed robbery many times. Like other Marxist DAs, Kamala supports abolishing cash bail, which means bloodthirsty criminals that just killed somebody can immediately leave custody, go out and kill somebody else, which, which by the way, they often do. Under these kinds of woke, radical left policies, Atlanta is like a killing field and your governor ought to get off his ass and do something about it. Thank you so much for joining us on today's show. I'm your host, Elvis Derry. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.